Tonight, a man is behind bars in connection with a deadly hit and run. State police found the body of Billy Ray Baker in the Saul community in Perry County yesterday afternoon. They arrested Marcus Abner this morning and charged him with reckless homicide and leaving the scene of an incident. Wounded veterans found a reason to smile this weekend. For the third year in a row, they got a chance to spend time with others just like them at the Warrior Adventure Deer Hunt. WKYT Sean Moody talked with some of the veterans. Along the Kentucky River in Woodford County, this group of hunters is celebrating a successful weekend. He's our reigning big buck champion. So. But this was no ordinary hunt. <sighs> I did. It's priceless. This is the Warrior Adventure Deer Hunt. It's a chance for veterans to get together. Most of them are Purple Heart recipients. It's near and dear to my heart. You know, I was a combat veteran and, and had buddies that um, that could have benefited from something like this. Organizers and veterans say it's not really about whether or not they come back from one of these blinds with a the deer. They say it's more about the time spent inside with each other. Matt Bradford was in the Marines. He lost both legs and his vision after an explosion in Iraq. Getting out here in the woods and just being around other wounded warriors and veterans, it, it, it eases the mind a lot more and it kind of relaxes you and it feels good to be around your brothers. Byron Marlowe is an Army veteran. He began this event three years ago. This is about a bunch of brothers getting together, spending time together, uplifting each other. Uh, and doing it in the great outdoors. The veterans came from several states. Organizers say they don't have to pay anything to participate, and even the taxidermy services are provided at no charge. You can't put it in words, uh, the feeling that you get of knowing that you impacted somebody's life and that you changed their life. In Woodford County, Sean Moody, WKYT. Marlowe and the other volunteers plan to expand the Life Adventure Center's veterans services. A Kentucky art teacher can now check an item off her bucket list. Retired Hardin County Schools art teacher Kate Bateman will decorate the White House for Christmas. Bateman will leave for Washington on Thanksgiving Day and has her first meeting with White House leaders that evening. Volunteers will work for four days to get the house holiday ready. December 3rd, there will be a White House reception with a tour to see the finished work. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 11. This was a big time game for us. We needed this. We needed a team that could beat us on the dribble, that wasn't afraid. He said his team needed a test. Today, the Wildcats got one. A Lexington man is dead and a shooter on the loose. We're talking with police about their latest homicide investigation. We are currently under a first alert severe weather day and that continues into the overnight because of a winter weather advisory that was issued for the potential of snow. We'll be tracking those chances for you and I'll tell you how much to expect coming up. WKYT News at 11 starts now. Get ready for some snow. Good evening. I'm Kristen Kennedy. Tomorrow morning we could start seeing snowfall making the drive to work difficult. That's why today is a first alert severe weather day here at WKYT. Meteorologist Jim Caldwell is tracking the snow on the first alert defender. How's it looking out there, Jim? I'll tell you why. So far here in central and parts of eastern Kentucky, it has mainly been on the rainy side. But tonight, that winter weather advisory kicks in high gear because we'll start tracking that transition over to snow. You see all the areas highlighted here with the advisory. Now we get over to Defender where we're watching that snow line continue to crash in. Here's the catch with this. You can see it showing up around the Louisville area and back up toward Covington. Covington probably seeing full-blown snow at this point because temperatures have now dropped to freezing there. Still above freezing around the Louisville area and some of the reports keep going back and forth. Sleep snow and then back to rain. So it will continue to be that way until we get all those temperatures to drop to that level to get more widespread snow to start showing up and even more back out toward our west. And that's going to be the source of even more energy for us as we move ahead through the overnight hours. You can see that snow line works its way all the way back down into Arkansas. So this is a big chunk of a system that is on the move across the country. Here are those critical numbers. We have to continue to see those drop as we go through the overnight hours. You see they're still above freezing there in Louisville, 38 in Frankfurt, and here in Lexington, 38 degrees. Now we look at our weather impact for tomorrow. Snow, certainly a big deal for you. Travel, it's going to be an issue because I think during the morning commute, it could be at its peak. It's with some of uh, the heaviest bands moving through our area. 
perfect timing to make it a bit of a nasty run. As far as power outages directly related to snow, we're going to keep that on the low category. It's just going to be a bit of a mess as folks head out and about tomorrow morning. We'll break more of this down. I'll track it into the area hour by hour coming up in just a few minutes. We'll continue our winter weather team coverage in just a few minutes. We have some new information to tell you about a story we first brought you at 6. A man who was gunned down in Lexington this afternoon has died. The Fayette County coroner tells us someone shot 31-year-old Walter Gray multiple times at the intersection of Warnock and Goodloe Street. Emergency crews rushed him to UK Hospital where he died almost two hours later. WKYT Sam Smith is tracking the investigation and has more on the search for the shooter in our top story at 11. Multiple gunshots were fired here at the intersection of Warnock and Goodloe Sunday afternoon, prompting this investigation by Lexington police. When the first responding officer arrived, he found a black male, 31 years of age, had been shot at this location. Walter Gray was taken to UK hospital where he would later die from a gunshot wound. Police say several shell casings were found at the scene, and it's unknown how many shots were fired, how many times Gray was shot, and how many shooters there were. It looks like uh, the shooting probably occurred on Warnock, and then the victim uh, fled to this area here, just uh, 30, 40 yards away. Not far away from the Christ Temple New Assembly Church that had a service at the time, police still do not have a suspect. And we're interviewing all the available witnesses in the area to see what they saw or heard, but we haven't yet been provided with a, a suspect description. Police still need your help. If you have any information about this shooting, contact Lexington Police. In Lexington, Sam Smith, WKYT. This is the 16th homicide in Lexington this year. We're continuing our weather team coverage tonight now. Crews are getting ready to prepare the roads for the ice and snow expected to hit the area overnight. Crews will start working on the roads in about an hour. WKYT's Jordan Blinds is live in Hamburg right off Man of War tonight. She's talking to state roads leaders about the plan to keep drivers safe. Jordan? Well, as you can probably see here behind me, the roads right now in Lexington are slick simply because of all of the rain that we have had today. Now, even though we have not seen any snow just yet, road crews say that they are ready for what's expected to come late tonight and into tomorrow morning. Earlier this week, you just get your equipment. Uh, as ready to go as you possibly can. Employees at the transportation cabinet began their winter weather preparation work. They put plows on the trucks. Uh, they uh, put the spreaders, the salt spreaders, on trucks. They also started pre treating priority roads with brine solution, usually recognized as those white streaks you see on the pavement. But the pre treatment solution doesn't always stick. When we're able to pre treat, rain will wash it off the road. Sunday's relentless rain possibly diluted the brine. It's almost hazardous out there because of the amount of water that's coming down. Water that's expected to turn into snow overnight. We will probably have extra personnel coming on late tonight. Of course, salt will then be spread to prevent snow from sticking. And although the state salt supply isn't as full as they'd like it to be, we are not at total capacity, but we're in reasonably good shape for the first snow and ice event of the season. Now, road crews here in Lexington are expected to report to work tonight at midnight. Live in Lexington, Jordan Valines, WKYT. Jordan, thank you. The director of the Department of Streets and Roads in Lexington says the ground temperatures are warm, which is why they're not expecting ice to create a big problem at this time. Earlier this week, we told you about one group trying to make sure everyone stays warm this winter. Tonight, they are asking people to help them. The Catholic Action Center is extending its hours to stay open throughout the night. They want to make sure people have a place to stay when the temperatures drop. And as WKYT's Mike Linden reports, those they help say they are grateful. According to the United States Census Bureau, just over 18% of people in Fayette County are below the poverty level, with more than 1,500 people living on the street. That's where the Catholic Action Center of Lexington steps in. With winter weather and bitter cold temperatures on the way, donations are needed now more than ever. Think about those who are used to simply making it uh, day to day. 
their days are changing because all of a sudden they need to be able to wrap up or it's more they will die. While the snow is concerning, Ramsey says it's the extreme drop in temperature that has her worried about those trying to keep themselves warm or for those who can't afford to. Well, the dramatic drop in temperature puts our people on the streets and folks even in marginalized housing at great risk. This isn't just about being uncomfortable. This is about their health and their, their welfare. The Catholic Action Center recently extended their hours to stay open around the clock to accept donations and provide shelter. If we're places like this, um, a lot of us probably uh, end up dead somewhere um, outside as cold as it is. And especially if we uh, ain't got no food, uh, we'll go hungry too. Donations of clothing, blankets, and food can be made at 400 East 5th Street in Lexington. Mike Linden, WKYT. For more information about how you can help donate to the Catholic Action Center, go to our website, WKYT.com. Remember, you can track severe weather when you're away from your TV. On WKYT.com, you can take control of an interactive first alert defender and zoom into your neighborhood. You can also download the WKYT First Alert Defender Radar app for your iPad or smartphone. Just search for WKYT in your app store. And be sure to help us track the snowfall across Kentucky this winter. Send us your photos and videos using the hashtag WKYTRulesWinter. Hundreds of people in Lexington were without power earlier tonight. Our partners at the Herald Leader reporting someone threw a stick into an electrical substation, causing the outage. A spokesperson from Kentucky Utilities says the power went out around 6:30 and came back on around 7:15. Fire investigators are trying to track down the person who set a Lexington home on fire. That fire started early this morning at a home off Henry Clay Boulevard. No one was inside at the time. We're told the fire was so intense it melted through garbage cans and peeled siding off nearby homes. Neighbors could see flames tearing through the house. They are worried an arsonist put their children's lives in danger. It could have been my house, you know. They could have just said, hey, let's just start fire right here, you know. And I got a 10-year-old in there asleep. It's not cool. Firefighters tell us the owner of the house recently bought it in a foreclosure sale.